I've always had a very soft spot for American music. I remember when I was just a kid, I loved the Broadway shows, and I still do think that when the history of 20th century music comes to be written, that Jerome Kern and Richard Rogers and Cole Porter and Irving Berlin and Stephen Sondheim will have a major part in that history because they brought words and music together in the context of the theatre in a way that no one else quite had and they were making contact with an audience that was broader than ever any opera composer had the chance to connect with. I do think that the word setting of somebody like Jerome Kern can hardly be better, just taking a lyric and through the melody that you write, carrying it into the heart of the listener. And it reminds me of Schumann, actually, who did very much the same thing. But, of course, here it is in a 20th century context. I was always drawn towards that sort of music. I've always, in a not very well-informed way, loved and enjoyed jazz. And I love black American music, blues and all of that. It seems to me something that could only have sprung out of the melting pot of America. And of course I'm not American, but on the visits I've made there, I've always felt very at home and I've absorbed, I know, a lot of the musical influence. How, how comfortably does this um, Broadway bright lights side of your musical personality sit alongside the, the inhabitant of English cathedrals and the, and the light music uh, composer? <laughs> It's funny, isn't it, that um, I will be sitting perhaps in King's College Chapel on a dark November evening listening to a choral even song with Herbert Howells wafting over the um, afternoon air and I think, well, this is a thousand miles away from Broadway and yet I feel equally at home in both settings. I really do. Are you conscious of... of sort of flicking a, a switch to one side or the other, or, or how does it work exactly when you're working in these very different modes? Oh, look, I mean, some social occasions you turn up in a dinner jacket and mm. others you turn up in jeans and a sweatshirt, mm. and it just depends on what sort of context you're in. I don't have any difficulty with different genres and separating them. Mm. Sometimes one strays across into the other. My church music does have some pop influence in it, and... I think those that don't want to do it just know that it's not appropriate for them and they tend to leave it alone. What has surprised me is that so many churches outside of America, where a lot of my church music was written for, have picked it up and found that it's OK here as well. Because, of course, the church itself has changed worldwide. It's become more informal, more open to different influences. I'm very much a traditionalist in that for me the music of the church is Gregorian chant and Palestrina and Bach and so on up to Benjamin Britten and Vaughan Williams but at the same time there is a loosening up and if in my church music there's a bit of pop influence um, that only just reflects my warmth and affection for it.